What's up guys and welcome back to Tech Lab. So recently I've been getting into my ITX builds and if you've been following the Discord, you've seen some of the progress that I've been making. One thing I have found is that there's not that much option out there when it comes to things like cases. And although parts are much more expensive when you go to the ITX form, I do still find them really, really fun to do. So I managed to pick up one of the cases I've been after for a while, which is this one from NZXT. Now I managed to get this at quite a bargain and that's because it actually is a damaged product. Now, originally my idea was that I was gonna modify it and cut and shut it basically so I didn't really worry about the damage but when it turned up I thought that actually the damage wasn't too bad. So in this video I'm going to have a look at how we can fix it and maybe you can pick up a bargain too. Now this case didn't actually cost a lot compared to its retail price I actually got it for about half the price that you would normally and looking at the pictures that it had on the eBay auction, it didn't look too bad overall. The places where the damage actually is, I didn't worry too much about because I would have been able to take that out when I did some modification to it anyway. But when it turned up, it didn't look too bad at all. On the back, there is a small dent in the back cover, which you can't actually tell very well on camera because it's so small. And I'm not gonna worry about that today. I'm gonna worry about the bigger damage that was actually found in the back. Now, if you can see here, there is actually a big impact in the back where it's probably from delivery um, that's actually pushed the IO shield and the fan placement in. And I don't think it's that bad to actually repair this at all. Now the first thing we need to do is strip the case down, but we will need some tools to do it. Obviously we need a screwdriver and that's to be able to take the fans in and out. We'll also need a bit of a hammer and you should generally use something like a rubber or plastic hammer, but I don't have one of them around. So I've actually taken a normal lump hammer and I've put some loads of different coats of masking tape over the top so it's a little bit softer and it won't damage the metal. Uh, something that you can actually add pressure against, which I'm just using a piece of wood, and something that has a perfectly straight line so that we can actually make sure that we've got the lines back in the case. To take these apart, it's pretty much generally the same as any other case. We need to remove them on the side. We can take out the packaging on the inside as well so we don't need the extra bits and bobs in there which are these ones and we'll need to remove this back fan to see if there's any damage to it at all. We simply do that by unscrewing the screws that hold the fan in and I'd be surprised if this fan isn't damaged because of the amount of bending in at the back that there is. Now these are not cheap fans at all because obviously they're supplied with NZXT fans but we can always source replacements. They're very easy to get, particularly on somewhere like Amazon. So if we need to, that's what we will do. So upon removing the fan, we can actually see that one of the corners is broken off. Now we can attempt to try and glue this back on because the fan itself is still pretty square. Or we can actually use it as an intake and screw in from the front. So we actually haven't wasted a fan too much. What I'll do is I'll make sure that I get this tested and see if it actually still performs and that it's not damaged any of the motors. And we'll see where we go with that one. What is left in, in the case is a bit of the plastic from the fan, so we'll take that out now. And we've managed to save the screw, but obviously the little piece of plastic is not really going to be too good. Now that we've got the fan out, and to be honest, from looking around the case, there isn't that much damage anywhere else at all. It seems all pretty fine. What we need to do now is look to pull out this piece here. Now we can simply use our hand to pull out some of this and it does start to pop back in but we've got a bit of a wobble in it but we'll keep going. We want to pop it back into being straight. Use as much of our fingers as we can to be able to push the grill back into shape and it actually looks like it's gone pretty smoothly so far. So obviously we'll need our straight edge. And we want to just check to make sure we've got a bit more here. And there's also a slight dent in the top here as well. So it looks as though the VGA ports or the PCI Express ports were damaged in there, have gone back straight and we'll remove the screws to make sure that we are measuring up properly. A little panel comes off the back there and we'll take the PCIe blanks out. And 
like that and then we can just double check to make sure everything's as square as possible. So the actual PCI slots, they've actually gone back perfectly fine. They've just pinged straight back into play. So I don't can't see anything that's actually still bent out of shape there. But we do have this funny shape across the back grill here. Now it looks as though these are actually imprinted outwards. So it's got a bit of a shape to it that it hasn't managed to obtain back. So we'll still do a bit of bending by hand. Try to get it back into shape as much as we can. Keeping our straight level, making sure we're going as straight as possible. And it does need to come out just a little bit more. Now, the actual kinks in this here have actually started to become a little bit tough. So, and there's a kink in the top there, which we're not going to be able to push back by hand. So this is where our hammer comes into it. And we can start to knock. The damage back in. Now if you do mark this the back is actually black on these so it wouldn't take a lot to be able to spray it. and I can see there are a few little marks in the actual uh, powder coating from whether it's screws or whether it was whatever impacted it at the time so we'll sort them out later with a bit of uh, paint but for now we'll try and get as much as we can straightened out. Now for the inside here what we want to do is we want to be able to put the bar in there and we're going to hit it back out to so now we've pretty much got the grill where we want it to be we're just using it to flatten out any of the bumps that have remained into the back. And then we can suddenly try our IO shield, make sure that the uh, IO shield goes back in square. And that means that we've actually got everything pretty much where we want it to be. It's a little bit tight, but probably because it's still a little bit warped, but there we have it. So the IO shield goes back in perfectly fine. The fan grill's not looking too bad now. It's got a little bit of a flex in it. But it's looking pretty good. Now that we've got the shape back into the actual back and it's looking pretty good. There's no real marks on it at all. There's still a little tiny kink in the top and we'll knock that out later. It'll just take a simple tap from a hammer at the right angle. And the grill shape's not looking too bad. There's still a little bit of flex in the back. But what we'll do now is we'll fit a motherboard into it, make sure graphics card and the motherboard all line up perfectly fine. And if they do, then we're pretty good to go. Now I've managed to pick up one of the motherboards that I've got in the inventory. It's uh, an older MSI ITX board motherboard from a second and third gen Intel. Uh, it's not a bad board, but it's gonna be enough for us to be able to test this. Obviously you don't wanna be testing the fitting and things on a repaired case with your brand new ITX motherboards because they're not cheap. But we'll get everything fit in and we'll see if everything fits fine. Now that we've got the motherboard installed, we can actually see that everything is aligning up perfectly well. The IO shield itself is pretty much keeping everything in square and in place. So what we need to do now is drop a quick graphics card in it to make sure those PCI slots are lined up as well. So pop that in here. And there we can see that the graphics card actually fits in perfectly fine. Everything is fully lined up. There's barely anything that you can see now in terms of damage. The one thing I will do is just fit this fan, the, the broken fan, back into the back, but I'll turn it the other way around so that we can just test to make sure that it all lines up and another fan would actually go in there fine. So we'll just simply mount that into the back. We'll grab our screws. And we'll just have to re-tap the holes because obviously we're going for the front now, which is what you would do if you were front mounting anyway. But we'll get this fan put in. So I've got this fan installed and it's actually straightened everything up perfectly fine. You can't tell at all that there was any damage on the back. There's a slight little bit of marking at the top here where we had to hammer it in to be able to get that dent out of it. And there's a few little marks around it, but it seems to be where all the screw holes are anyway. So it's looking pretty good all around. And we've saved ourselves a ton of cash being able to repair something like this. 
Now it's not that you'll see the back anyway, but what we don't want to do is we don't want to have anything misaligned so that the motherboard gets damaged or the graphics card gets damaged, particularly at the moment with the price of graphics cards. Um, but it's actually looking pretty good altogether. So for half the price and just a little bit of work actually fixing the back here and fixing the side panel, we've managed to get a case for a really good deal. And I'm actually quite excited about this one because this is one of my favorite ITX cases that I've managed to see out there. I'm gonna look forward to building in this. I've got some real good plans for it because I wanted to do a bit of a white build for a while and I've got some extras turning up soon to uh, go with this. And so make sure you subscribe if you wanna be able to see those videos. But overall, I'm really, really happy and I hope you've learned something too on how you can save by just buying a slightly damaged thing from eBay and putting it back together yourself. If you like this video, make sure you give us a like, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you wanna see some more videos going forward and I'll see you again soon.